Hope everybody's doing good today. Good to see all your faces. Glad you put your webcams on. It's better when I can see you, you know, but uh, glad to, that you're here for a great another class. Hope you've been going to a lot of classes lately. It's kind of that time of the year where it's good to tune into classes and be here all the time. I'm Patrick. I'm an agent just like you. I'm out selling. This is what I do full time. And I happen to get to teach uh, on the side and, and be able to help our agents within our company. I've been with our company for the last almost nine years now. And I, I work out of our Liberty office. That's where I've lived my whole life is, is Liberty. I'm out of my home office today. I, I need to uh, change the, the clock. I haven't done that yet. So somebody pointed that out in a meeting earlier yesterday. And I'm like, well, you know, whatever. I'll just wait until spring and then I don't have to change it. So see how long the batteries last. But glad you guys are here. Hope everything's going well on this Thursday morning. Today, you're here to talk about one and done mail marketing. It's all about using the company tools uh, to, to do some mail marketing. If you know me, you know I've had a lot of results uh, off of mail marketing over my career. I've used it almost my entire nine years and I've gotten a lot of good results from it. And so uh, mail is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I'd love to just hear from some of you, maybe you know what you're here to learn about today, what you tuned in for. Obviously you came here for a reason and I'd love to hear what that reason is. So if you wanna unmute yourself and just you know, jot it out or you can raise your hand, you can do that too. Uh, but start thinking about what you came to learn about. Before we do that, I wanna go down and just give you, you know, you've used Zoom probably a million times by now, but if you go down to the bottom of your screen, you can click on participants. That'll open up the screen where you're able to raise your hand or give me a green checkbox or a red X, depending on what I'm asking you. So find that and give me a green checkbox. Once you find that, that'd be great. That way I know that you're uh, as smart as the rest of us are. But, uh, and then also down there at the bottom is the chat button. Uh, Robbie and I have already been chatting in the, in the chat and you can too. If you click chat, you can just say hi, go ahead and do that. Just uh, you know, put a hi in the box down there. That way we know that you found that as well. That's a great way to communicate with us throughout this Zoom meeting uh, to keep us posted. Appreciate you all doing that. Hello, Deborah and Greg and Giovanna and Pam and Jessica and Pam and Margie and Charlotte, everybody else that's here. I've got a great crew that's with me. There'll be others that join us too. Uh, and uh, everybody else, glad that you're here. So, hey, if you've got something that you wanna learn today, I'd love to hear about it. What, are you, what have you got? If you got, go ahead and unmute yourself, put it in the chat, raise your hand, tell me what you've got. What do you want to learn today? Because I'm here to make it all about what you want. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody's gonna. Somebody's really typing. I can tell. Yeah. How to do the mailings on their own? That's a good topic, Pam. We'll hint at that a little bit today. Uh, mail strategy. Good idea, Greg. Bulk mail. Hey, Charlotte, you're in the right place. You chose the right class today. You tuned into the right Zoom session. So. Uh, those are all good topics. We'll cover those today. You know, one and done mail marketing. This session is really about uh, using the company's tools. And so uh, we'll talk about what those tools are. Some of you might be new with the company. I know a couple of you aren't even with our company yet. So we appreciate you being here. Hopefully we convince you uh, that we offer you some great marketing tools and mail is one of those avenues that we offer some great marketing. So let's get started. And uh, today we're going to talk about why and how you should be using bulk mail in 2021. That's going to be, you know, it, you know, 2020 is over, thank God. And so we're almost into the new year where you'll be able to hopefully implement your new marketing plan and start some mail marketing. The stuff that you're planning for right now is going to be implemented in January. So think about that. You're really already looking into 2021 to get your mail marketing going. We're going to look at the different company tools. One of those is print time or DMS postcards. When I say those, those are one and the same, but print time and DMS, we're going to talk about how to use that, how to take advantage of the company's TEL25 program. You might've heard about that before. Then we're going to log into the greenhouse. Many of you have maybe, maybe never done that before, but we're going to log into the greenhouse and look at the print marketing center, which is also known as express docs. And so we'll spend some time looking at that and some of the different mail marketing techniques that you can use in there. We're also going to, in the greenhouse, look at Pinpoint. Pinpoint is that great tool. We'll talk more about that. We have access through uh, Meredith Corporation to be able to use that tool. So we'll talk about that a little bit today, too. And then, like Pam mentioned in the chat, she wants to figure out how to do it on her own. You know, that's an option as well. Excuse me. But the whole point is uh, this is all about the company tools. That's what this class is for today. We'll do a little teaser of how to do it yourself. Um, but, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but I offer a pretty good workshop when it comes to uh, do-it-yourself DIY mail marketing 
and I think we'll be offering that sometime uh, in the not so distant future. So uh, that'll be a good teaser for that, but we'll get you started on the right track today. Uh, more than anything, I want you to come up with a game plan, figure out how to do these things on your own. And as you're going to learn and find out, you know, book mail takes persistence and consistency. You can't just do it once and expect results. You've got to do it over and over. And so that's, you know, big, the, probably the biggest takeaway uh, that you could have today is that you can't just try it. You got to stick with it and do it. Like I said, I've been doing it almost nine years. So uh, it takes time to pay off. Let's talk some more about what bulk mail is. By the way, if you have any questions, you can always raise your hand under participants or put it in the chat and I'll get to it when we have the right time. Uh, but let's talk about what bulk mail is. On your screen now is this USPS price list. And even before 2020's debacle, uh, the Postal Service was a real mess. And so if you look at this list, it's like you know 70 some pages long. That's how many mail options there are in the world. So when we, you know, we're just scratching the surface, we're just barely talking about uh, what kind of options you can do with bulk mail. So when you come to one of my bulk mail classes, the point of my, my telling you this is that, you know, we're scratching the surface, but also as you become more comfortable with it, you're able to reach more people and see more substantial savings. So the point of bulk mail is that it's cheap, uh, but today's options are gonna kind of show you, you know, the basic entry level stuff of how to do bulk mail. I also want to tell you that when I say bulk mail, I really mean the same thing as standard mail, uh, marketing mail, direct mail, pre-sorted mail. Those are all the same terms in my mind when I'm telling you uh, what they are in my class. More than anything, they are slow mail. It's not like putting a stamp on it and you know, getting it there in two days. Bulk mail is typically a pretty slow process. They, most often you hear it called standard marketing mail. Uh, and that means that they literally move the mail at a rate that they want to when they have the time. And if you think they have the time right now, well, you're wrong because they've got a lot of political mailings and uh, you know, everything else that they're dealing with. You know, who knows what they're doing with all those uh, ballots, you know, but that's just a joke. You, know, you gotta have fun with it. But anyway, point of the story is that they move it when they have the time. It's not the same as putting a stamp on it. So there's my big, uh, my big red X. I can make that, oh, my voice cracked when I made the sound effect. That was gonna be a lot better than what I thought. But anyway, let's keep going people and talk about over the years, the mail that I've done, just show you some examples. I mean, these are a couple of years old at this point, but over the years, I've done a lot of different mail pieces. I put in my old ones so you can't steal my freshest, latest, greatest ideas. But you know, like over the years, I've done eight and a half by five and a half postcards. There's a great design, here's the back of it. You'll notice that I use bright colors, uh, you know, fonts that look like maybe handwriting. Uh, great logos and design. Those are things you can do uh, on your mail. I've done, you know, little teeny postcards, four by six postcards, you know, market stats. Everybody just loves those. Yeah, right. But anyway, there's a four by six postcard that you could send out. You could use a design like that. And that doesn't have to be horizontal or vertical. You could do whatever. You know, this is a great time of the year to start developing your holiday, uh, you know, postcards. Maybe you don't have time to write, uh, you know, a Christmas card or a holiday card to everybody on your COI list. Well, guess what? Maybe you could just send them uh, a postcard that has some nice looking fonts and things like that. I've also done these really big newsletters over the years where, you know, it's like an 11 by 17 newsletter, takes a lot of content. I'll show you some ideas for some newsletters today too, but uh, there's one that, you know, I, I purchased a template and kind of changed the colors and the design a little bit and found some articles on realtor.com or uh, realtor magazine's website and put those in there. So there's options like that uh, where you could really get into it, Pam Bowman, and do it on your own, uh, like you said in the chat, but there's other options too. So let's, you know, talk and, and get you some information of why you should be thinking about bulk mail. You know, when you come to one of my classes, I want to impact your bottom line. I'm not just here to talk and, you know, say good words and sound good and have good jokes. I do that all day. But when I come to my class, I'm here to give you some good information and hopefully impact your bottom line where you can make some money at the end of the day. That's the goal of my classes. So bulk mail in 2021 is important despite the fact that we're in this social media world and everything's online and Facebook and you know maybe you've got your realtor Snapchat ready to go. Well, bulk mail still has a place in your business in 21 uh, and I'm gonna tell you why. You know, it's really a rarity for one thing. Uh, it's kind of few and far between. Think about the last time you got a really good mail marketing piece from a real estate agent. Has it been sometime recently? 
I don't know if, if so, you can, you know, put it in the chat that you got a good one, but I bet we could make a better looking piece with some of the great branding and tools that we have as a company. Uh, but gosh, you know, it's a, it's a rare thing. You don't get very many good looking mail pieces. When you get a piece of mail, well, you're touching it. And so you're getting a deeper engagement than what you would if it was an email. Think about all those emails that you don't even open. You just see the subject line and you pass through. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that's what people are doing to your emails too. So when you get mail, they at least have to touch it. Even if they're walking at Joanna, my broker and I talk all the time, even if they're walking it to the recycle bin, they're still seeing it, looking at your colors and your picture and your logo, they're, you're getting a deeper engagement out of it. That gives you a better understanding, better comprehension of the marketing piece. And oh my gosh, think about all the mail that's sitting around in your house. I've got a pile of it next to me here, but there's pieces of mail that sit on your, you know, on the coffee table or just on the table where you bring it in. Uh, they have a longer shelf life. There's many a times, many stories that I could tell you where people call me years later, ready to, to do something with me that they've got one of my just sold postcards or they, you know, got another mail piece from me. So mail has a really long shelf life. Uh, as long as it's good looking, people usually keep it or, you know, as long as it provides some value, that's when somebody's going to hang on to it rather than just instantly throw it away. So that's a good, good point there. On your screen, it shows you that mail marketing has a 5.1% response rate. That means if you send out a mailer to 100 people over the course of time, after reaching those people several times, you'd get about five people out of those 100 to respond to you. That's what a response rate is. You don't think that sounds that good. You know, It's really not that great of a response rate. But when you look at email marketing, it's just over half a percent of people. You know, That's not even 1%. Of people, half a percent of people are going to respond to your email marketing. Look at this, even less than half a percent for your social media marketing. Uh, that's even paid results on some social media marketing, depending on how skilled you are at doing those paid, uh, you know, ads and boosting on, on Facebook and stuff. Uh, but, and then uh, speaking of paid, paid search results, you know, if you had maybe a Google ad or you know, maybe you, you, you did some advertising on a website or something like that. Uh, a paid search result ad gets about a 0.6% response rate. So hey, 5.1 isn't looking too bad, you think? So hopefully that gives you a little motivation to think about mail marketing in 2021. When you think about what type of piece you wanna send, I'll tell you right now, write it down, put it in your mind, that postcards have a better return rate than a letter in an envelope because the less interaction that somebody has to have, the better. The less time somebody has to take to open your letter, just send them a postcard. Nobody likes letters anyway, unless it's handwritten. Let's talk about ways to improve your response rate. There's a lot of things that you could do, but before we do, I wanna mention that you know we're hit with about 3000 marketing touches a day. Think about that, billboards, radio ads, Facebook ads, emails. What, you know, what else is hitting you? Just think about all the different advertisers that are spending money to get inside of your little eyes. And so there's 3,000 marketing messages a day that you're being hit with. That means eh, people are being bombarded now more than ever with everything being so technologically advanced. So what you've got to do is you've got to reach people almost 20 times before they take action. And so that's a good thing to keep in mind is, you know, I, I hinted at it earlier, you're not going to get results off of one mail piece that you send out. If you do, Hey, great, but keep doing it because you're going to get even better results by the time you reach them 18 to 20 times. So make sure that you know that it's going to take a lot of time. It's not going to be a January life-changing event for you. Uh, just like everybody's world is going to be better when 2021 comes around, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's not going to happen. So we've got to just keep touching people, keep advertising and uh, keep it up. Another thing that you can do to improve your response rate is including people's names on the mail. Or we all get those mail pieces that say, you know, current occupant or resident or whatever. It's better to include the people's name. I'll talk a little bit about where you can get that content if you're trying to farm a neighborhood. And obviously full color, why would you send a black and white mail? Or I get them all the time, but people are, are pretty well wasting their money when they send out something black and white. You can make the message personal and boost your response rate by 50%. That's pretty impressive. So let's say you can make it personalized. I'm giving you some ideas here. A good time to pay attention would be to, you know, send out a mailer to a neighborhood and say, uh, you know, such and such neighborhood, uh, you know, market update or, uh, you know, your, your neighborhood expert, just making it personal. 
you got to send the right message to the right person. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but you don't want to send, you know, a renter campaign to a baby boomer neighborhood that's been there for 40 years. They're not trying to rent a house. So, you know, you got to send the right message to the right people. Even better, if you tailor and partner your online presence with your mail pieces, maybe you're doing that with a QR code to your uh, image gallery for the property that you're sending out, or you are just putting your personalized URL. Many of you have a vanity URL or you know, a URL that's personalized to you. Mine, for instance, is thelibertyexpert.com. I have several others. You can go to GoDaddy and buy them for less than $15. And then you can forward your website content to those. That's a whole nother class. But the point is, is that you can partner that online presence with your mailers because most people are going to check you out online before they call you. Almost everybody is going to look you up. I hate to say that. So you better have a pretty good online presence, whether it's easy for people to get to or they're gonna search you, they're gonna look you up. Make sure you've got reviews and make sure you put your, your, your most recent solds onto Zillow so they see how many you've sold in the last year. Those are things you can do to strengthen your online presence uh, because people are gonna look for you, especially if you're doing cold marketing, farming, people that you don't know, they're gonna definitely look you up online. So in real estate, uh, you know, a lot of people like working with us. 90% of buyers like working with their agent, but at the end of the day, when they come to buy another house, more than a third didn't use that agent again. That's pretty depressing. Huh? We all know those people. They bought with so-and-so last year and they didn't buy with us. Same thing on the seller side. Most sellers like working with their agent. And in fact, they tell us that they would use their agent again in surveys. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, gosh, only a third of them do. That's really depressing, isn't it? So those are stats that should be pretty eye-opening to you. I want to know in the chat why you think that is that they, they don't use us again, whether it's time to buy or sell. Why, why don't people come back? Anybody have an idea? Just type it in. Yeah, yeah, just type it in. Somebody, you guys have got this. You're doing good. A lot of clients uh, you know, haven't heard from us, right, Pam? They forget about you, Greg, yeah. I mean, no matter how good looking you are, people still can forget about you. And, uh, you know, it's just the reality of it. We don't keep in touch. And Pam, you're right there. Sometimes it is other situations. Maybe there's a new friend or family. We all know somebody that's a real estate agent. But the majority of you that answered, and Pam, you too, said, you know, we just don't keep in touch. We don't follow up. They forget to how to get in touch with you. Yeah, I wonder why, because we don't keep in touch with them. So I like that, Sudi, you know, their mother's best friend's cousin is now in real estate. Well, yeah, that's true. But in reality, most people don't come back to us uh, because they, they don't know how to get a hold of us. We haven't kept in touch. So we're going to talk to you about how to do that with bulk mail today. We have the perfect brand in real estate to, uh, you know, partner with bulk mail marketing because not only are we a lifestyle real estate brand, we're the only brand in real estate, by the way, that has anything to do other than just real estate. Think about that. But, uh, you know, we have 40 million people that read the Better Homes and Gardens magazine. And so people are already getting the mail. They're already seeing our name in the mailbox. Makes even more sense when they, uh, you know, get your name and the logo in there together. And in fact, uh, the BHG magazine puts a full page Better Homes and Gardens ad in every issue of the magazine. That's part of their uh, contract arrangement with BHG Real Estate. So a great thing to do uh, would be to, you know, partner that presence with what's already showing up in people's ma uh, mailboxes. I want to put it in perspective for you. You know, let's talk numbers. If you like numbers and you like to know how much money you can make, now would be the time to look at your little screen, people. So last year in real estate, I can attribute directly nine homes to my bulk mail uh, marketing efforts. I track these things very closely. So nine homes that I sold in last year were just because of mail marketing. Well, that equates to $2.4 million of sales volume. Now, you know, take it the right way, but down South, you guys, that probably would have been almost four, you know, our sale prices are a lot lower up here. So point of the story is an extra two and a half million dollars of sales volume. Well, that equals $72,000 of gross commission income. Obviously, you have to take your split out of that money before you, you know, do your calculations, whatever your split is. But hey, who could use an extra 72 grand? Uh, I could, hello, I could this year, yeah, let's go. So the point of the story is that, you know, I'm not just talking to talk, I'm walking the walk, people. And it's time for you to get real about mail marketing because uh, if you do it and it, it, it'll pay off and you'll have results, you know, hopefully better than even mine. So keep up with it. Take a little breather. 
Ooh, yeah, you got some good stats there. I hope you found something that has inspired you to do some bulk mail marketing. Am I right? Are you with me? Everybody feeling good about it? You know, stretch your arms because you've been working so hard this morning. I've been touching this screen, tapping it. It's been hard. Okay. Let's talk about your, uh, your mailing list. So, you know, the first step in bulk mail marketing, once you figure out that you're going to do it, which all 26 of you logged in today should, the point of it is once you figure out that you're going to, it's not time to go do the fun part and design the mail piece. That's not the right order of business here. The first thing you've got to do is design and come up with your mailing list. You've got to figure out who you're going to be mailing to first, because that way, like I hinted at earlier, you're going to be able to tailor your mail piece to your marketing list, and it's going to make much better of a, of a marketing effort for you. So make sure you work on your mailing list first, which is the really unfun part of all of this uh, for most people. But anyway, let's talk about that. Speaking of firsts, well, the first thing you should do once you realize you should be doing your mailing list first, well, first and foremost, you should be mailing to your COI list before you ever start farming anywhere. So, you know, your COI, those people know you, they've already got a relationship with you, they trust you, they can, you know, they, they're more likely to respond to your marketing than a cold relationship would be. So it's important that you first master your COI mailing list before you go start farming a neighborhood. If anybody does it reverse, I'm going to be upset with you. So make sure you do your COI first. Your COI, you know, you know that phrase. It's your circle of influence or your sphere of influence. You know, one and the same there. People that are in your COI will, you know, sometimes we forget even to put our past, uh, but our current clients more than anything. So put those people that are you're currently working through that you've been looking for a house for six months. You can't find something under 250 and you're just going to be looking for the next 18 months, it feels like. Well, put those people on your mailing list too. They, they belong on there. Your COI obviously includes your family. I say this because, you know, for the longest time uh, and probably still, I've been doing this nine years. Obviously, you saw my results just from mail, so I'm doing okay. But my grandpa never thought that I was a serious real estate agent year after year. So I'm like, well, well dude, I'm going to put you on the mailing list, you know, so you get my stuff. But uh, put your family on there, too, because even those that you're closest with, you can't take for granted that they know that you're in the business and that they're the ones that they're going to, you know, you're the one they're going to call. Uh, you got to take that seriously. Obviously, your friends, those that you do business with, we hear all the time, you know, put your nail person, your hair person, your, you know, person, I, you know, all your people on there. A great place to send mail to would be a chiropractor or a doctor's office or a dentist or places like that, uh, those that you do business with. I've got this category that I call the bread aislers. Those are the people that you run into at Hy-Vee and you're in the bread aisle and you're looking at those really smelling good Pepperidge Farm buns, you know, and you're just there and you've run into somebody that you haven't seen for probably a decade. And, you know, they, you, it's natural. You start talking about what's going on in your life, you know, what a dumpster fire everything is. What are you doing? How's real estate? And uh, you just have a natural conversation. What's the natural thing that we all do? You know, we all hand them a business card. If you're saying that, that's what most people would do. Well, a yeah, bad idea. Don't do that. Instead, Get their information, sign them up on Home Suite or Zap or whatever system you use, put them in there as an account for one thing, but get their information or look it up later. It's so easy to find people's address. You know, we are in real estate, we sell houses, so it's probably pretty easy for all of us to find out where people's houses are and put those people on your mailing list. Even driving down the street sometimes, I'll see somebody that I pass and I'm like, oh, I know that person. They're a bread aisler. I should put them on my mailing list. So I would challenge you over the next you know, week or so to uh, you know, just find five people. I know we're not going out and about as much, but you can still find people even in your daily life to put on your mailing list. All you have to do is just take a drive and you'll probably see somebody you recognize uh, to get on your, and I'm not joking about that. That happens all the time. You know, a lot of categories and trainings that you go through will, will, you know, rank your clients between A, B, C, D, E, or, you know, hot and cold or, you know, whatever. Who cares what they are? A to F, put them on your mailing list because you never know who's going to come back to you. I've had the people that I thought I, I disliked the most. And I thought they felt the same about me, but yet they've come back to me and, and referred business to me. So put them on your mailing list. You never know. Don't take somebody. I think somebody's worth, you know, a, a dollar a quarter to send somebody uh, a mail, you know, mail piece to, uh, because all it takes is one good lead and you're doing pretty good off of it. So that's who's in your COI. 
any questions before we talk about farming a neighborhood uh, for, for coming up with your COI mailing list? Feel free to raise your hand or put a question in chat if you'd like to uh, about your COI. We all know that we have our COI. Many of us probably need to update our COI mailing list. Uh, this time of the year, it's about that time, you know, I know it's, it's very busy still right now, but now is a great time to do some of these housekeeping things, um, and especially in the blues of winter coming up soon. Those are great things to do, but don't put it off till January. Do it now. Do it now. Call now. Uh, continental siding, you know, call now. Okay, let's talk about farming a neighborhood, people. You guys, I hope somebody, some of you are smiling. Some of you are just like sitting there thinking, who is this guy? All right, let's talk about, you know, I don't care what you think. Let's talk about farming a neighborhood today. Uh, farming a neighborhood is great. Once you do what? Have somebody tell me, somebody just yell it out. What are you going to do first before you farm a neighborhood? Yeah, somebody just unmute and say it, you know, it's not that hard. What are you going to do first? COI. Oh my gosh, Amy, you're right. You're going to do your COI mailing list first. So please focus on that first. Again, those people know you, they trust you. They're going to be much more likely to reach out to you. That's like the teacher saying, requiring somebody to call out basically what I just did. So thanks, Amy, for playing along. But uh, then you're going to focus on farming a neighborhood. So farming a neighborhood is great. Here are some tips. Once you have decided you're going to do it, I want you to pick an area and you're going to stick with that area. You're going to choose it and you're going to stick with it. You're not going to do it for three months and say, I haven't had anybody call me. No, you're going to stick with the neighborhood for months and months and months, probably a whole year, all of 2021. You're going to stick with that neighborhood and mail something out consistently. In doing so, you can search in the MLS, very easy to do. We've all been, uh, you know, we're all experienced with MLS. You're going to search in the MLS for an area or a neighborhood that lacks a dominant listing agent. We all know there are some that, you know, have a listing agent who's, you know, the one that's always listing the houses. Well, you probably want to choose one to start off with anyway, uh, where there's a lack of a dominant listing agent. You also want a neighborhood that's got a turnover. Not every neighborhood does. We all know those neighborhoods that people just stick around in forever, and uh, that might not be a good neighborhood to start in either. There's also neighborhoods that don't use agents, and so there's kind of through the grapevine, or houses just all of a sudden pop up sold, uh, you know, for sale by owner, and nobody even knew about it. So it's now more than ever that's happening, and so just pay attention to neighborhoods that use an agent uh, that actually have some activity in the MLS. A great place to start is your own neighborhood. Uh, it's a great way to just, you know, you've already got your foot in the door, so to speak, because the people probably see you and know you. Hopefully they already know you're in real estate. That'd be a great place to start. Some of you live in neighborhoods where there are other real estate agents. Some of you live in neighborhoods where there are other BHG real estate agents. That's okay too. You know, you don't own the neighborhood and neither does your coworker. Uh, probably only one of you is going to be consistently sending out mail pieces though. So you might take that person off your mailing list and go ahead and send out. We're all in business for ourselves. We make our own investments in ourselves. I would encourage you to even market to your own neighborhood unless there's already a lot of marketing going on in that neighborhood. You live there too. You bought the house. So go ahead and mail to it. You can also farm based on demographic. Uh, and so I'll show you some ways to pull some of those, uh, that mailing list data, but uh, you can look up, you know, housing value, uh, estimated household income value, uh, number of people in the house, you know, age range. None of those are protected classes. There are a lot of protected classes when it comes to real estate marketing. So make sure you don't market based on those demographics, but any of those that I mentioned are, are perfectly fine to market to. Where do you get your mailing list once you get it going? Well, you can compile your own. Uh, I wanna mention to you that you can use tools. These are tools that you can only use in Missouri, places like the parcel search for, you know, maybe your county assessor or your county collector site. Maybe they, your county or city has a GIS mapping tool or like I mentioned, the collector. So those are options too. You can also use that tool in Missouri, in Missouri only, uh, in the MLS called Realist to get your mailing list data. That's an option as well. I wanna mention that in Kansas, it is illegal. It's not just frowned upon, it's illegal to get your mailing list data from public records. So all those sources that I listed up above there, that's considered public record. Public record are city, county, or you know, state or national government sources. That's what public record would be. And so you can't use county parcel search or, or you know, GIS mapping to get your mailing list data in Kansas. That's illegal. 
instead, what you could do is you could, you know, use a mailing company. Uh, you could hire, you know, you could find a, a company on, online to buy a mailing list from. And we have some tools within the company as well that I'll show you where you could get that data. Uh, but one of them, for instance, I guess I didn't mention it, but uh, you could uh, go to it and write it down. It's melissadirect.com. Uh, and it's not on the screen, but it's Melissa like the name and then direct like not something that's indirect, but it's direct. MelissaDirect.com, a great place to get mailing list data. You can buy really affordable mailing lists. Uh, you just got to keep them updated about every quarter, every 90 days or so. Okay, great. So that's like, you know, why and how and what to do with mail marketing. Now I'm going to transition us into the different tools that the company offers us. And so before I do that, I just kind of want to take a breather and see if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about. So one question that came up, Marcia, in the chat mentioned, what about an HOA direct? Well, that's not public record. Uh, there's no government portion of that. So uh, Marcia, you can use that HOA directory with permission, but most of them are going to be very clearly saying, you know, not for commercial use or something like that. So you'd want to make sure that Maybe you're the president of the board before you send those out or something, you know, but, uh, you know, use with a grain of salt, I guess. Any other questions about what we've talked about so far? I guess you're all ready to move on. Oh, Sudi's the president and she would not send it out. You know, so isn't that the beautiful part of being an independent contractor business owner is that, you know, I, I'm with you. I, I wouldn't do that, especially because that's, you know, kind of a breach of trust as somebody. Maybe maybe if you're not the president, you should do it. But, uh, you know, but anyway, uh, so you think about it, you know, do what you want, but uh, be prepared to, you know, pay the price for it later, too, I guess. But, uh, you know, HOA documents are not public records, so it would not be illegal unless you don't have permission to use that data. And it'd probably be pretty hard to convince a board uh, to let you use that for commercial reasons. I guess, unless you live in the neighborhood, you know everybody already, there you go. All right, people, we're gonna transition and talk about print time or DMS postcards. Now, many of you use this program regularly. I'm gonna show you what it's all about today. Print time is uh, where you have that Tell 25 program and so, when you get a new listing or you've just sold a house to a buyer or you've sold your listing. Those are the three times that you can get a free postcard sent out on your behalf. 25 postcards sent out to the neighborhood. It's not free for everybody. The company pays for it, but it's free for you as an agent that you're able to use uh, most of you depending on your split that you're on. So that Tell 25 program is free for the majority of our agents. You can use that program. And I would encourage every one of you to make it a habit. When you get a new listing, send out a postcard. So we'll show you that program here in a little bit. Print time uh, and DMS, by the way, they're the same thing. They also have some seasonal designs that you can choose from. Uh, they also do like our magnets. You can use their templates or you can send them yours. You could uh, email them there. They've got a great crew there that's ready to work with you. Like I mentioned, they have some magnet options. Many of you send out their chief's magnets. And when the company does a promotion for those, that's who they go through is DMS. And uh, they have that auto tell feature. Make a mental note of that auto tell uh, feature in there. And I'm going to show you that when we log into the system, which we'll do on the screen today, uh, I'll show you what that auto tell feature is and how to manage that. But that's something that I want to talk about. Uh, DMS is about 71 cents a piece if you're not doing their, their free 25 ones. Uh, and so if you're going to pay for them on your own, you're going to pay about that 71 cents. There's obviously upgrades, magnets, and, you know, quicker postage and stuff like that, that you can pay them for. Uh, but 71 cents is about what it is. Typically, when you do your TEL 25, you're, you're inputting the property address and they pull the neighborhood list. They pull the houses that are surrounding that property and that's who they send those postcards to, uh, which is a great, that's, that's who I would send them to for sure. But you could change that if you wanted to. You could upload that list, send them to your COI if you wanted to tell them you just sold a property or something like that. Uh, but probably better marketing uh, dollar wise with a big zero as the expense to send them out to the surrounding neighborhood and do something else with your COI. 
We're also today going to talk about Express Docs. By the way, these are just kind of hints at what we're going to cover. But Express Docs is the print marketing center inside the greenhouse. They are, uh, Express Docs is the name of a company. They're a for-profit company. It has nothing to do with Better Homes and Gardens. They're just who BHG has chosen a contract with to be their print marketing center. So you can find them in the greenhouse once you figure out how to log into the greenhouse. And from there, you'll be able to choose the print marketing center. They've got a lot of options. That's where a lot of our brokers get your business cards. They also have options for flyers and mailers and other stuff that you can do too. They have a really cool newsletter that I'm going to show you today. So if you've been thinking about doing a newsletter, I'll show it to you. They've got a lot of templates to choose from. You can either upload your mailing list or they can ship those items straight to you if you wanted to maybe do some door knocking or you know mail them yourself on the bulk mail permit that the company has. Those are options too. And the rates for Express Docs is based on the quantity and the speed that you choose. By the way, Express Docs is based in Dallas. They're very fast. They move very, very quickly. And so uh, that's a good teaser there. I also want to talk about Pinpoint and introduce you to that. Pinpoint is that tool that we get through Meredith Corporation. Meredith Corporation owns the licensing rights to Better Homes and Gardens, that name. And they own the magazine. They own a lot of different media companies. KCTV5 News is owned by them, for instance. But uh, in that, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate licenses that name through Meredith. And as part of that arrangement, they've given us access to some of their mailing record data, basically. And so we're able to find their mailing list data based on demographics. And that's what Pinpoint is. It literally allows you to pinpoint people based on their household income or their home value, or, you know, different criteria like that. And I'm going to show you that system today, too. I didn't even hit the button. I just went through everything that I was going to tell you. But you get there through the greenhouse. Uh, again, it talks about the demographic data. It's based on quantity. It's a little pricey. And so that's something to consider. The cool thing about it is that once you pay through Pinpoint and do one mailer, you get that mailing list data. So they're going to allow you to download that mailing list. That's pretty valuable to people is that once you get it, you're going to pay a premium the first time. They're going to print and mail the piece. But at the end of the day, you're going to get the mailing list, which you can use with a cheaper option in the future. That's what I would do. Hello. Uh, another option is our company pays for a bulk mail permit. They pay $200 every year, whether you use it or not. And they're paying for this bulk mail permit. There's a great option. There's a great workshop that I offer that I'm going to tease you to end up going to. If you want to go, you can put me in the put it in the chat, or you can uh, put in the email, and I'll let you know when we have it scheduled. But you have a lot of options when it comes to doing it yourself. That means that you're going to design the mail piece. You're going to send it to the printing company. You're going to prepare it with the mailing app, you know, labels or printing the addresses on there or whatever. And then you're going to take it to the big post office uh, in downtown Kansas City and you're going to mail it. And you're like, why am I going to do all that? You know, well, the point of it is that you're going to uh, save a lot of money. And that's the, that's the moral of the story there. You have a lot of design options when you do it that way. You're not stuck with preset templates. You get to brand it more to you. Many of you saw my designs at the beginning of the session that had logos and fonts, things like that. You also have a lot more control over the timing. You're not mailing something from Dallas and then you got to go through, you know, all the political mailings right now and then eventually make it to Kansas City. Instead, you can, you know, pretty well know that once you deliver it to the post office, it'll be there within a few days here locally. So you can kind of decide when they get it. You don't have to wait on drop shipments and it is much quicker to do it yourself right here. So design, print and deliver on your schedule. How about that? You save a lot of money by doing it yourself. That's the reason I do it, you know, money. Money, 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 thank you. So you can do it yourself and save money. And by doing so, uh, gosh, it costs you less than 50 cents per mail piece. That's printing and postage uh, to do it yourself versus, you know, 73 cents for a mailing of 200 on Express Docs, for instance. So, you know, that's a $50 savings. Uh, more than a third is what I save when I do it myself. That's just a mailing of 200. Many of you may have a mailing of, you know, in a couple of years, you might get up to a thousand mail pieces that you're sending out every quarter. And so that's a, you know, good savings there. But $50 a month on a mailing of 200 that you do every month, uh, there you go. That pays for something else that you can be doing to market yourself or more people that you can reach with your mail marketing. So there you go. Uh, that's a little tidbit of what we're going to cover today. So that's kind of like my, my presentation on the screen. Now, before we, uh, you know, after we transition here, we're going to jump into actually looking at these websites and figuring out how to do this stuff, what to do, where to do it, 
and how to do it. How, 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 that's basically what we're gonna cover. So any questions before we, we do that? Feel free to uh, put your hand up in the, in the participants button or put a question in chat and we're gonna get started here in just a second. Okay, everybody, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do print time. We're gonna take a little break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna look at Express Docs. Then we're gonna look at Pinpoint. And then we're gonna come up with your game plan of how you're gonna change your life with mail marketing. Are you with me? Hope you are. All right, so let's first look at print time, which is the same as DMS postcards. You can go to that website by clicking on the dmspostcards.com. You can uh, follow along with me today, but I probably would encourage you not to. And just make some notes of what you need to do. You're gonna use the login that your broker gave you. Like mine, for instance, is the same as my uh, MLS login. Hopefully you didn't pay attention to what my password was. But uh, anyway, you can log in there to uh, print time. It'll bring you to this dashboard. By the way, you're getting there through dmspostcards.com. Write it down because I won't be in your ear in a few hours when you're trying to do it, dmspostcards.com. You get there, you log in and you're at this dashboard. If you have login problems, reach out to your, uh, your broker. And if not, they'll probably tell you to reach out to DMS directly. Uh, but here you are on your dashboard. Now, the first thing I want you to do is hover over on the left side. There's those, you know, by the way, it's a very basic website. It's like the most 1995 website that there is that we still interact with. But what you can do is over on the left side, you can look at my account. That's what I really want you to click on to first. So click onto it and you get there and you see everything about you. Uh, and so what you can do is click onto that. There you go. Once you're there, you're going to be able to update all your information. So like, for instance, if you see like where I put a tagline over there, uh, you'll see that, you know, I just chose to put that in there because I'm so young and people don't realize I've been doing it for, you know, eight years this year, for instance. So uh, when people see my, you know, high school picture on there, they don't know how long I've been doing it. So it, for me, that's important. You could put something else like that, or you could put maybe you're a silver or a gold or a platinum award winner nationally and you could find what ranking that puts you in and put that on there. You know, there's options of what you could do and personalize this. There's a lot of blank spaces. Feel free to, to add whatever you want to. If you ever wanna change your password in DMS, by the way, this would be the place to do it. It's kind of hidden in there at the very bottom of the page. So you can put in your new password, then you would verify it over on the right-hand button too, and then click save and your postcard is updated. So there you go. You can also update your photo up here at the photo tab. But uh, now what I'm gonna do is click on that auto tell button, which is uh, kind of a tab up at the, at the top there. Auto tell is gonna be a fine feature for many of you. I don't personally love it because they send out some pretty basic looking postcards. But auto tell means that once your sale is recorded, whether it's a buyer or a seller or a new listing, they're gonna automatically send out the 25 postcards on your behalf. And it's gonna pull a picture sometimes from MLS, sometimes not. And then it's gonna put the address on the postcard. And then it's gonna be like the most, you know, non Patrick phrase ever on that postcard. And it's probably not your voice either, uh, but it's gonna send that postcard out. Now, some of you may prefer that, that's perfectly fine. Again, we all own our own business for a reason. You can do whatever you want, but the point of it is, well, you know, you might be more beneficial to spend some time personalizing the postcard every time. And so it might just become part of your, you know, sale routine is every time you close out a sale and, you know, process your direct deposit or whatever, you log into print time and make sure that you send out a just sold postcard while you're at it. If you want the auto tell feature on, you're just going to drop that down and you're going to say yes. Some of you, it may have defaulted to yes. Some of you may be defaulted to no, but importantly, you should go into my account and make sure that it says no, if that's not what you want, because once that postcard's out, you don't get another 25 to send out. So you want to make sure that you either have it yes or no, depending on what you want. If you do auto tell now, that's not gonna send it out for a month ago. Uh, there was a question in the chat. It's gonna sell it out for your future listings uh, or your future sales. And so uh, just keep that in mind. It's not gonna go back at all, especially a month ago and or last month, even if it's late in last month, uh, you'll wanna make sure that it's just for the future, okay? So you can go in and design your own though and send it out for that property. I don't think there's any like, 
you know, statute of limitations of when you could send out a, a tell 25 postcard, you probably want it to be pretty recent where it wasn't, you know, three months ago and the sign's been gone and the neighbors say just sold, you know, that's not that great. So send it out sooner the better. But if I were you, I would put that as a no, uh, just because I make it my routine to go in and update and it sure is going to benefit you to have a more personalized postcard. I wish I, I need to, I have one at the office that I'm not in right now. Uh, that's like a basic generic one. And I should have brought that with me to show you what it looks like, but it's, it's pretty dreadful. Anyway, you'd hit save there. Now, if you wanted to automatically, as part of that tell 25, send out more than 25, you can do that. And you can always do that. Even if you customize them yourself, you can always send out more than 25. The company will pay for the first 25, and then you'll be sent a bill, usually on your monthly uh, you know, billing account with the company. They'll send you out a bill for your remaining, uh, you know, however many that you send out. There you go. Any questions about your tell 25 auto tell feature. Now I'm going to show you how to customize a postcard. So back at the home screen, which is the dashboard, once you've updated my account, I want you to click on just listed, just sold right there. See that? It kind of loaded there. Just listed, just sold. And you get all these options at the top of your screen. Now you can choose between just listed, pending and under contract, or just sold. The other two, which are distinctive collection, those are great if you have a distinctive collection property and that has to meet certain criteria. Talk to your broker about that. But if you just listed a property, well, you would choose that one. Now the pending option, you don't get an extra postcard just when something goes pending, but the pending feature is there for you if you were to have sold something or, you know, before you got the just listed postcard out the way things are going right now. So if I listed something on a Friday and maybe I'll wait till Monday because I think it's going to go pretty quickly. And sure enough, it went under contract Saturday. Well, I can send a just pending contract or under contract postcard uh, instead of a just listed one, which you know is more of a marketing message in to, to the neighborhood, really, because you, you did the job. You got the home sold. So that's what I, you would do there. And then if you just sold a property, now you can send out just sold properties to listings or to buyer properties. So either one you can send out a just sold postcard there and the company will pay for that. So let's just say I just listed a property. I'm gonna just tap onto that. Look at all these templates that you can choose from. Uh, FPO stands for, you know, I never remember. It's future photo placement. It's not photo placement. It's like future placement, I, you know, who cares? But that just means that you can put a photo wherever it says FPO. So you'll notice that like uh, right here, there's two options of the same template. Well, one of them says FPO, that means that you can change those two pictures and the other one, actually it's not the same template that is, but uh, one of them, you can change the pictures on the right and the one on the left, you can't change the pictures. So just make sure you pay attention to which one you select. Let's just say, uh, by the way, when you send out a pretty auto tell one, they just send them out with pretty generic pictures. Sometimes they'll put a picture in from MLS. Sometimes that's not your picture from MLS, by the way, either. So uh, make sure that you uh, choose wisely what you wanna do. If you go down and scroll down to the bottom, there's a lot of new options too. And so they've come up with some new designs in the last couple of years. But one of the options is upload your own custom card there. So maybe you've gone to one of our Canva classes and you feel pretty good about designing your own look. You like your, your certain colors and your logo and whatever. Well, you can design an eight and a half by five and a half JPEG file or a PNG, just a picture file is what it needs to be. And then you can upload it here into DMS and have the front of the postcard done. So that's an option too. So let's just say I really like, uh, you know, this one, for instance, let's just choose that radio button there. And then if you go down to the bottom, you're going to choose the back of your magazine or your back of your postcard. Uh, you know, I always like the ones with pictures of the houses. So maybe one of those two options. That's the, the ones I usually choose. You can choose whatever you want. What I'll do is maybe just choose uh, this one because I like that one. And then you just go down and click next. Again, it's a very basic website, nothing special about it, but you're going to go on here and look, it's going to kind of auto-populate some stuff on there. Anywhere that there's a little box, you can just barely see it on the screen that I'm sharing. You'll see it more on your computer, but see there's a little box that surrounds that uh, text box. That means that it's editable. And so you can just tap on that and uh, change it and it'll pop up a box where you can then change the address. So very simple to do. Same thing down here at the bottom. I would click on drop your photo here. 
I would upload the photo of the property or whatever I wanted to. And then you would tap on this box and it would pull up a box there for changing that text. And then you also don't wanna forget that one. I think that's a good little call to action box that you could put on there. And it'll already pre-populate your return address for your office. And you'll notice that we changed, you know, I mentioned to you the celebrating eight years thing that was uh, part of your uh, profile. And so I put that in there and it showed up just fine. So it allows you to preview it. I'm gonna warn you that the way you see your postcard on these uh, you know, proofs here, that's the way they're gonna be printed. So if there's something that's off or you know, if something's weird about it, uh, make sure you put a little note somewhere before you just you know, trust it and send it off. And uh, anyway, that's that. Sometimes when I'm on my iPad like I am, it doesn't show me the next button. And so the next option, just a second, I'm gonna just don't even look at the screen because I'm gonna start over because sometimes it's a little finicky when I'm on my iPad, but that's the best way to share my screen. So give me just a second. Um, again, it's like from 1995. So there's that little blue button down there. Click next. Once you've customized it and personalized it, then you're gonna proof it. And you're like, well, I'm seeing the same thing. Why am I looking at it again? Well, then you're just gonna go down here and check this box that you approve this layout. But if, you, if what happens, what I, if anything happens like what I hinted at where something's weird, you could check the second box, not the first one, and then leave special instructions in there. So sometimes I'll say, you know, please fit all of that into one text box or bold this word or, you know, whatever you want to do. There's very few things that they can change for you, but they're great guys. They'll figure it out. Either that or they'll tell you that they can't do it. And that's where you would put it. Sometimes we instinctively just check check boxes. And if you check both of them, they're going to call you and they're going to be like, well, you checked both boxes. What did you mean? Did you have special changes? So just make sure you choose the right box like you approve this layout. So I'm going to click next and that's going to open up again, a very basic website. Now over here on the right, I'm gonna zoom in slowly so I don't make you throw up, but you can upload a mailing list if you'd like to. So if you've got a mailing list, you can upload it to DMS, that's where to do it. Or most often you're gonna put the property address in here. So maybe I just sold a house on Main Street. I'm gonna put the address on Main Street into that box. I'm gonna choose 25 because that's what's free for me. Then I'm gonna click add. And then literally you're just gonna click next down at the bottom. You're gonna click submit again and your order will be submitted. That's as simple as it is. So that's how that would work on the TEL 25 program. Simple, easy, wham, bam, thank you, sir and ma'am. So there you go. That's how you do just listed, just sold. Are you with me? Uh, Pam asked in the chat, what format would they need uh, as an Excel or uh, you know, a CSV file type of thing is what they would need, usually an Excel file. Just real quickly, I wanna show you uh, some of the other products that they have. It's under annual products. Some of you may choose to do this. Some of you uh, may not. Uh, it's up to you. I think there's probably some better options to do uh, other designs other than the TEL 25. But there are some like, you know, let's choose on, uh, let's choose winter because it's almost there. Um, believe it or not, we can just choose like a Merry Christmas card. So they have some nice updated templates that we have provided them um, that marketing and Christian has helped to partner with and send to them. And so you're welcome to use any of those templates too. And again, they're about uh, 71 cents a piece, I believe, uh, to be mailed out. And so they'll keep you posted on that. And you'll just pay them directly either via credit card. They might call you and say, hey, I need a credit card on file. Or they, uh, if it's a low enough amount, the company might allow you to add that to your monthly company bill. Um, but those are two options there. They have some other options over there like Ninja postcards and marketing materials. But more than anything, you're going to use DMS and print time for these just listed, just sold postcards that tell 25 program because our company's paying for it. Uh, it. We might as well take advantage of it because you know what, I've gotten some really good results off of these over the years. Uh, you know, it's few and far between, but if you really take the time to personalize your marketing message on those postcards, you're gonna do a lot better in getting a response and having people call you even months and years later, sometimes they keep those postcards. So if you do a good job with photography, and you know, maybe you put a little you know, personal you know, sound in it. It sounds like what you sound like instead of a robot uh, in your words, that makes a difference in your marketing. So I would encourage you to do that. Any questions about the TEL 25 program?
just to recap DMS, you're going to go to dmspostcards.com. You're going to log in with the login that's very likely matching your MLS login. You're going to get to the dashboard. The first thing you're going to do is click onto my account. Then you're going to be able to customize just listed, just sold postcards. Under my account is where you would choose whether uh, to have the auto tell feature on or not. If it were me, I would tell you to turn it off. So you make sure you customize every postcard in between. But hopefully that's been useful content for you. I know that there's just a little bit over half of our agents that regularly use our TEL25 program. And that tells you that not very many of you watching today do this regularly. And so if you're one that does, awesome. Thank you for taking advantage of it. Great marketing for you and our company. But if you're not using this on a regular basis, go in and do it go do it. It's, it's being paid for you. I know they're kind of chintzy looking templates sometimes, uh, but do it. You know, it's free marketing and you get results off of them. If you send them every listing, every sale, uh, go in and do it. Any questions about our uh, DMS postcards? You guys are good. We're going to take about a five minute break. If you come back to me about 11.05, uh, just stretch, get something to drink, you know, uh, rest your voice, Patrick, you know, all that. We'll be back in about five minutes. I'll see you soon. Glad that you're back. We're going to continue to talk about our different mail marketing tools that we offer within the company. We've talked so far about DMS postcards. That's a good one. You get that tell 25 program, every listing, every sale, you get 25 postcards sent out, uh, on the behalf of the company paying for it. And that's free for you as an agent. So, I don't know about you, but I like free, so you probably ought to take advantage of that. We're going to transition now and start talking about uh, some of the tools that BHG National offers us. And anything that's associated with BHG National, you usually get through, uh, get to through the greenhouse. And so that's what we're going to start talking about now. But again, if you have any questions that pop up over the next, uh, you know, 55 minutes that we're going to be talking, feel free to raise your hand in the participants button or put those questions into the chat. So let's talk and go to uh, your web browser again. Again, I'd encourage you probably not to follow along with this, but just make some good notes of what you're gonna be doing later today. But you get to the greenhouse through mybhggreenhouse.com. And uh, it's real simple, mybhggreenhouse.com is the way that I remember it. But you can also go to login.bhgrealestate.com like you see on the top of the screen now. But I like mybhggreenhouse.com. And then once you get there, you're going to use that email address that you never use. It's your first name, dot your last name at bhgrealestate.com. Uh, and so you would log in that way and you're going to use that password. I couldn't tell you what yours is, but uh, obviously I don't know mine either. So let's go back and uh, try it again. Hang on. Let's see if it works. You're just going to log in. Nope. So sometimes you get you know, bad requests, whatever that might mean. I don't know, but uh, let's try mybhggreenhouse.com. Let's see if it works again here. Sometimes it doesn't, usually when I'm teaching, but uh, let's see if it logs in properly. Once you get there, you'll know that it's working all right. Oh, the suspense. Once you get uh, the hang of greenhouse, you'll find out that things take just a really long time to load sometimes. And so just understand that that's the way that the greenhouse is. There's nothing too scary about it. It just takes time, especially later in the day for some reason, like in the afternoon, that'll happen a lot. But see, third time's the charm if you just keep trying. It's easy to give up the first time and say, oh, I'm not going to do that today. But keep trying, you'll get logged in. Uh, eventually. So we made it to the greenhouse. That's the good news. Now, the next step is you're going to click on, like I'm seeing the mobile version right now, by the way. When you log in, you might see all the options automatically on the left side of your screen. But for me, I'm, I'm for instance, seeing the mobile version. And so we'll just click that little button and it'll open up all the options. If you've ever want to learn more about the greenhouse, feel free to come to one of our, our greenhouse classes. We offered one last week, for instance. But uh, if you click on the marketing tab, one of the options that we're going to be looking at today is, well, print marketing. That makes sense. So then you're going to click on to go to the print marketing center. You're going to click on that option. 
and that will open up Express Docs or the Print Marketing Center. Remember, they're the same thing. So just click on Print Marketing Center. It'll get there eventually. There you go, slowly but surely. Now, again, with the greenhouse, you got to click and click and click again, so you'll get there. Then you're going to click go to the Print Marketing Center. Now, mine's going to look a little bit different than uh, what it might look like on a desktop, but if you're on a tablet or the device is small enough, it might look like the one that you're going to see on your screen here in just a second. It'll load eventually. They have some new yard signs available, I guess. I keep getting that pop-up, even though I click don't show me again, it pops up every time. But uh, anyway, this is what it looks like on Express Docs once you get kind of on the mobile version. Uh, it might look like this on some desktops. It just depends on your particular setup of your, of your monitor. But once you're here, this is the uh, partner and you'll notice that it is BHG branded. And that's because that's the partner that BHG has chosen to work with. Express Docs offers the Print Marketing Center and that's literally what we're in right now. So even though it looks like a BHG page, we're doing business with somebody completely unrelated to BHG at this point. It's a different company, uh, they're called Express Docs. So if you go into personal marketing, that's where you're gonna find the most useful stuff by the way. But if you click on personal marketing, It'll give you all these options, tons of seasonal options. You know, let's just say you're getting ready for New Year's Day to do a design. You can choose large postcards. Large postcards to them are the same as our DMS postcards, eight and a half by five and a half. And so you can scroll down and find one that looks right for you. They've already got them updated for the new year. So you can go ahead and design those get them saved, ready to go. And then all you've got to do later is come back in and click a button to get them you know, sent off to, to them to print. You could also make maybe a holiday party or a holiday online party or whatever you're going to do this year for your clients. You could make an invitation to those and this you know, be a good time to send those out. So uh, it'd be a good time to go in and look at some of their different designs, but they're really nice, modern looking you know, design. Some of them are house related, some of them are not. So it gives you tons of options as to, you know, what you can do and use for uh, inside Express Docs. So that's that. Now, what you can also go back to do is in personal marketing, which is that tab we were in earlier, you're going to scroll down and you're going to find the, uh, it's called, I don't see it in front of me. I have to find it before I know what it's called. I have to remember. Uh, da, 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 I'm almost there. Gosh, I got all, I got all confused. I must have missed it. We're looking for these newsletters and I was, there it is. That's, I was in the wrong place in the first place, but it's called Smart Digs. That's what you're going to look for. So once you get to personal marketing, you're going to find Smart Digs newsletter. I think this is the coolest part of, of Express Docs, to be honest with you. So every quarter, they have a different newsletter that you can choose from. And actually, I said that wrong because every quarter, they have about eight different templates of newsletters that you can choose from. So you get to choose what voice and what stories and what recipes you like better to be on that quarterly newsletter. So like here we are, we're seeing the, you know, fall ones right now. And it shows you, gosh, they've got more than eight options for the fall. But like there's some holiday ones and all of that. So they put the most recent ones up at top. So like, uh, you know, DIY around the house. Maybe I want to choose that one. I like the way that that looks and talks about. They have a fall picture up there. I'm ready to send it out. Really easy to customize these. So they'll, you can customize it on their site. You, they'll print it for you. They'll mail it for you. And that's kind of like a one and done type of thing to be able to send a nice mail marketing piece and be done with it. So the next step would be to click customize. Once you click customize, you're gonna open up and change the colors, change you know a little bit of wording, uh, but it'll load here in a second and I'll show it to you. Very simple to do. All you're gonna do is uh, change your color scheme if you want to. Ooh, look at that old picture of me. So you can change the color scheme. Obviously green would be a lot better, don't you think? But look, underneath where you change the color, there's this little content box. And the only thing that's editable in this whole newsletter template is this content box. And that box is literally right there, right? I mean, it's blurry, but that's where that little tan box, that's where that text would go. So whatever you put in that content box is what ends up there. That'd be a good place to put a little, you know, from Patrick type of thing 
where I could write a little note to my clients or the farming neighborhood or whatever and customize it to them. But the content is really fresh and updated, modern stuff that people might want to read. And then what you can do is uh, generate an updated proof just by tapping on that. So it's refreshing it now. You're going to see that it's going to look a lot better in green than it does in tan. I don't know why they chose a tan one, but it'll look good in green here in just a second. So certainly take a little bit of time to customize it. Doesn't that look better uh, in green than it does in, uh, in tan? So, hey, easy peasy, looking good. It's got that old picture of me, so you might change that. But otherwise you would click next down here at the bottom like I'm going to right now. And then you're gonna you know, proof it out, which it didn't update the proof probably because I'm on an iPad, but let's just uh, you know, click proof again and it'll generate the proof. Basically you'll go through approve the proof, you pay for it, you put your mailing list in, or you can choose their mailing list and go through that process and be done. So very simple, uh, intuitive stuff to do. So you know, here's that proof again that we saw. And then I can click down here that you agree that it looks good. Everything's still closed. I'm not in California, so who cares if it has lead in the paint, you know, whatever. So you just go through and check those options, you're done. Now you can use their complete mailing service or you can have it shipped to you. You might choose to have some of them shipped to you because those would be good pieces of content to put in like your client folders when you're meeting with somebody. So there's an idea for you, but that's not mail marketing, is it? So that's a whole other class, I guess. Maybe you wanna use their, their complete mailing service. You can do that, just click next. So you have some options. Maybe you're gonna do 200 of them. Well, with standard mail, which will take the longest, but for a normal mail piece, I would not spend the money on first class. I would choose standard mail and that'll be a dollar and four cents for a mailing of 200, for instance. So pretty affordable to send those out once a quarter. This would be a good strategy to send out this newsletter maybe once a quarter and then the other two months of the quarter you'll send out a postcard to them you know every month uh, you know good frequency to reach people by mail is once a month or so is what i would say once a quarter only touches somebody four times and remember it takes somebody almost 20 times to hear from you before they take action on your marketing so probably valuable to send something out to them once a month any more than that you're gonna get people to call you and, and tell you to take them off their mail off the mailing list, uh, which is okay too. People might do that even at once a month, but that's what I would encourage you to do. So maybe send this out once a quarter, maybe on the first month of the quarter, and basically you'll just click next and continue. So I've chosen standard mail there. The next option is you'll see all the mailing lists that I've uploaded uh, over the years. But one thing that you can do up here at the top, these are your options. You can upload a mailing list. That's fine, that's easy. That's like an Excel spreadsheet, your CSV file. You can upload them there. You can do a radius list. That's very similar to like what DMS does. They pull the addresses nearby that property within a certain radius, you can do that. Maybe you just wanna mail to a list on the street, just, to, you know, just down that street, uh, you can put that in there. And um, then you can put in uh, EDDM Elite, Every Door Direct Mail. Uh, that would stand for sending something to everybody on that mail route. And you saw that price that it was cheaper to do EDDM than it was standard mail. You might've seen that on that, uh, that chart there that showed the pricing. Uh, EDDM has to go to everybody on the mail route, but you can choose to do that if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to just blanket an area, you could do that. That's sometimes a large number of properties. So you'd want to look up that mail route before you choose that. And then just recently within the last year or two, Express Docs has added this demographic search feature, similar to what Pinpoint offers us actually. So it's kind of given them a run for their money, but you can use the demographic feature to search for things like housing value, uh, you know, annual income, stuff like that, that we've already talked about. So you could click on demographics, look in zip codes or neighborhoods or maps or whatever. And you do have to pay a little bit of a premium for that mailing list. And they charge you based on the number of addresses that you have, uh, but very reasonable, you know, just a, a teeny little half a cent or something for each address or something like that. So uh, go in and play around with that if you want to, but that's a tool that we have available to us. And Pam asked in the chat, can we use these postcards with home suites? Um, Oh, with a home with the contacts from home suite uh well sure i mean they're if they're your contacts uh you can easily send anything to those people those should be people that are on your coi mailing list for sure so hopefully that makes sense pam if there's a different question let me know but uh, anyway that's how you choose your mailing list in express docs 
One thing that you can do also, if you ever just wanna go in and update your mailing list or like come up with a mailing list, let's just kind of do it real quickly. You, you see your little pro, profile icon at the top right of the screen. If you click that little carrot there, you can open up address lists on that page. So if you click onto that, it'll show you the same page I was just on, but I didn't have to place a new order to get to that page. So let's just say I wanna do like a demographic search in my area and look at all these different options. So you've got like renter to owner lists or estimated home value list or demographic list. You know, they have a lot of different options that you can choose from. It's gonna work a lot better on a desktop computer than it would on my tablet right now. So it's not gonna look perfect, but I just, I just selected owner or renter. That means that they're only giving you the mailing list of either or. So maybe they, maybe you have a rental campaign that talks about how great of a time it is to buy with low interest rates. Well, that would be a good renter campaign. So let's just select that. Uh, very simple. So for instance, when you use their mailing list, you're paying nine cents for their renter list. It changed, the price changes based on the type of list that you're getting from them. But nine cents is what their renter or owner list costs you uh, per contact. There you go or you can pay for multiple use. Single use would be that you can use it well for a single mail marketing. Multiple use would be that you're able to keep that list and, and continue to use it. Now, the Postal Service requires that you update your mailing list every 91 days. That's a whole other topic that's a lot more detailed than what you would ever need to know, but just know that you need to update your mailing list very regularly uh, to make sure that you're not wasting your money because standard mail doesn't get forwarded. And so if you sent something to the wrong address, it's going in the trash and you'll never know that it didn't get to the right person. So just make sure that you are updating your list. If I go back to the dashboard for Express Docs, again, there's a lot of options, play around with them. They're all pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to sit here and go through every one with you. But if you go back to personal marketing, you know, let's just say that I wanted to get you know, more realistically a uh, Thanksgiving uh, card out. They must change it around based on uh, time of the year. There it is, Thanksgiving and uh, they have different options. So they're not always eight and a half by five and a half postcards. They also have really, you know, Mac Daddy postcards, uh, eight and a half by 11 postcards too on some of these options. So you could really choose whatever you wanted. They have some trifold options that's, that fold up and kind of turn into a uh, five and a half by five and a half square, but when you open them, they're kind of a large rectangle. So they have some cool, you know, new designs that you can use. Uh, and uh, figure all that out. So cool stuff, play around with it. Again, it's easy to use, pretty affordable. Every time I've ever ordered through them, which has been regularly, they're very quick. And so they're very quick to print it, they're very quick to mail it, and it gets delivered very quickly. And whenever you mail something, you'll choose the option of sending yourself one too. So you'll get that and you'll know when it gets delivered and what it looks like. And uh, there you go. Any questions about what I've shown you so far in Express Docs? They have some good other options that I'd encourage you to go click on to. You saw the pop-up about their new signs too that they're apparently offering. So uh, they're not technically one of BHG's approved sign vendors so far at this point, according to Greenhouse, but they do offer signs with our logos and fonts and all of that. So you can always go do that. They have name badges. They have other little goodies that you can order. So Express Stocks has a lot of stuff that you can utilize. And it's, I know it's not mail marketing, but they do have an online marketing program where you can use it for, uh, you know, social media and making, you know, ads and stuff like that. It's that online marketing tab up at the top on the right there, you'll see that. So feel free to play around with Express Docs. Every time I've ever interacted with them, they're probably my favorite vendor that I'm showing you today because they're very professional, have great customer service and they're very quick. And those things make a difference when you're trying to market and have timely information go out to people. So that's what I value anyway. That's the Print Marketing Center in Greenhouse. You get, you get to it under the little hamburger icon. Then you click on Marketing. We went to Print Marketing. You go to the Print Marketing Center, and then you click on Go to the Print Marketing Center once again, kind of covered up half by the screen that's showing now, and that's where it opens up that dashboard for you. So that is Express Docs. We're gonna move on now. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but I wanna to talk to you now about Pinpoint. Pinpoint's that cool system, again, where we get to use the data from Meredith Corporation and send stuff out to them. 
I always like to tell this story because Pinpoint is kind of pricey compared to some of this other stuff that we've seen. But Pinpoint allows you to uh, send stuff out to people based on demographics. And that's kind of neat. We saw that Express Docs does that too now, but Pinpoint is really the master when it comes to doing that. There's an agent that I know that lives in Florida and she sells mostly you know, second homes, vacation homes to people, lucky. And so she sends out these mailers using Pinpoint uh, she's part of the BHG network, and she'll send out the uh, pinpoint postcards to people all across the country in different marketing areas. So, for instance, in Westchester County, New York, which is a very wealthy county, just you know, about an, uh, less than an hour out of New York City, they have a large population that'll get a second home. And so she knows that she can send those pinpoint postcards to people in Westchester County, and she gets results out of them. Now there's a BHG franchise, or there has been, they just changed actually, uh, but there has been a really well-known BHG franchise in Westchester County. Uh, and so she was sending out her postcards with her Florida company name, but they were reaching people in Westchester where there's already brand recognition and already a level of trust involved with that. And she's positioning herself as the expert for, for vacation homes where she lives. That's an idea that we probably haven't thought about, huh? Now, uh, probably not very realistic for where we live, but something that's more our level, you could send out a, a pinpoint postcard to a neighborhood where you know that you have a move up listing. Maybe your listing is 400,000 and you know that you know 250, you know a neighborhood that's in that 250 range of people that would buy those 400 houses. Maybe the house you know, in a market that's not as hot as it is right now, maybe you would send out those pinpoint postcards to that move up neighborhood. So those are just some ideas of how you would use pinpoint, hopefully getting your creative juices flowing. You know, that's up to you. You're the one that's responsible for your paycheck. So come up with some clever ideas uh, and, and think outside the, the box of just making a pretty basic postcard and send it out to you know, the same people you always do. We get to pinpoint the same way we got to Express Docs. You go to marketing, you go to print marketing, and then you just click on pinpoint. Once you're there, you're going to click on go to pinpoint. It's going to open up a new tab and it's going to hopefully log us in the first time. And it sure did. You can also get to pinpoint now through the new marketing center on the greenhouse. That's a whole other topic that we can talk about in another class, but they just rolled out this marketing center a few months ago. Uh, gives you some great ability to, to customize things. So once you're here, you'll see on the right side of the screen, it says pinpoint. And what you always want to do, just like you and I did, the first step is somebody put in the chat, do we want to design our mail piece first? Well, maybe. Or do we want to do our mailing list first? Who knows? Who can tell me? Who can listen and heard, you know, heard earlier what the right answer is? Put it in the chat if you know uh, the right answer. Yeah, Greg, you're right. Greg's good. He's got, he said it in all caps. Giovanna got it too but uh, she sent it to me privately, but she was wanted to make sure she was right. You were right, Giovanna. Everybody knows you're gonna work on your mailing list first. So uh, first thing you'll do is, is start a new search. So it says on the screen, find people. That's what you wanna do. Click on the plus sign, it'll open it up. Now I'm just gonna do this with you. Sometimes it doesn't work on the iPad. Just you know, take my word for it, but we're gonna figure it out. Now mine zeroes in on where I live because it's, it's done it with me before, but I'm gonna do a neighbor, you know, like a, a town that I haven't done before. And I've, I've gone through so many of them that I have to, you know, let's just look up uh, Prairie Village because I haven't done one out there for a while. So in Prairie Village, it shows you that there's 15,000, almost 16,000 addresses. Uh, those are addresses that you can reach. And I don't know about you, but I don't have an extra $21,405 to use on my mailing list this year of all years. So uh, I'm going to narrow down the, the radius just a little bit. Maybe I want it within a mile of that zip code center. That's not, that's probably not the way you would do it because it's probably not going to give you the area that you want. So I'm going to go back to three miles, but I just wanted to show you that you can change that based on that. There's also the option, see there where it says optional draw a boundary. You can do that. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt it on my iPad, but you can draw the boundary on your desktop. You just draw little points on your map and you can that way narrow in like a neighborhood if you wanted to do it that way. That's an option. So click continue just because I've got my three mile radius around Prairie Village. Very fancy. Doesn't that sound fancy already? So 15,000 people live in that three mile radius. Now I want to narrow it down a little bit. And maybe I want to look at, uh, you know, I work really well with older people, <laughs> take it the right way. So I'm going to choose uh, mature mover. That sounds right up my alley. Empty nester and, uh, you know, luxury buyer. Hello. 
So I'm going to choose those three options. That brought my 15 down to 10. And so uh, that's better. Still don't have $14,000 to spend though, but that's a good start. Now that's the life stage category. See that there? Then one in the middle, see where it says it has the money sign and it says income. I'm going to select that. Now, I only work with people that make over 120000 a year, you know, don't we all? So you'll just select that option there. These are just jokes, by the way. It's being recorded. You're probably going to hate me later, but uh, I, these are just jokes. But anyway, so I have now 4,000 people that I can work with. Uh, that's getting more reasonable. Now I'm going to click on housing and, you know, you may or may not go this deep as what I am right now, but I really work well with people. I find when they have houses over $550,000. So I'm going to just select that box. That's going to pull them up. And now I have a thousand people now to you and me. That's probably a lot of mailers. That's probably more than what you would normally do, but I'm just showing you an example that how it narrowed down from 15 to, you know, a thousand people. Uh, within that three mile radius of, of Prairie Village. So that's how that works. Let's just continue on with that mailing list and go for it. I'm just gonna, you know, name this list something. You could name it pretty simple, but uh, Prairie Village Rich People. And I'll just save that list in there. And then later I'm gonna reference that, okay? So good. And it even gives you a congratulation, you know, it gives you awesome, awesome as if I needed encouragement today. So, and I do, so there you go. So awesome, it says the next step is to create a postcard, okay? So you're gonna create a postcard and it's pretty simple. You're just gonna choose out of their very basic, very lackluster templates to choose from. But let's just say I have this just listed because you know it's a move up property for their $400,000 house or whatever they have. I'm just going to choose one that I like, um, you know, like here's a standard image with three pictures on it. And I like the one in the back that has my picture on it. So it's just going to, you know, I'm just, you just follow the prompts when you're doing it yourself. I'm just doing it to show you. All right, so here we are. The next step is see on the left side, it gives you some options. It is a little wonky on the iPad as compared to what it would be on your desktop. But the next step is to, it's very simple. I just listed this property. I wanna push it out real fast with a pinpoint postcard. So I'm just gonna choose, choose listing. See that on the top left there, choose listing. Now I'm gonna just pull up, you know, like some of the most recent listings. This is showing all the, all the company listings. I think these are all of our, my office listings. So. Uh, here's one that would might be a good move up buyer for the $400,000 house. Let's move them up to 1.4 and sell Katie's listing out of our Liberty office. So uh, it allows you to update this. It allows you to update the price. You know, I don't like Katie's price, so I'm going to bring it down to just 450,000. So let's just save that. Went down from 1.4 to 450. I could, man, maybe I could buy that. And so just save that. It's going to update. And it's going to look at that. It's going to pull the pictures automatically from the listing into the postcard. That's kind of cool. Katie got some good drone pictures of that listing. And then you're going to look at the back of it and you can update that. Don't miss this opportunity. Obviously, you'd, you know, would want to put some more wording in there than just that. And then you would choose finish editing. And again, it's not showing that it's finished because I haven't changed everything on the back. But basically, after I do that, let's just see if I can get past this little bit here. Um, I don't know if I can, yeah, see, it's the iPad that doesn't let you do it. I'd have to capitalize my D there and my name for sure, because uh, anyway, what you would click on is finish editing. I don't know if you saw the pricing of what this would be for these uh, postcards ahead of time, but I had a thousand of them there. And the price that it hinted at that was like 200 something was um, uh, if they mailed it to you. So you might be teased by that first number there, but that's the number without the postage. So just know that that first number in that price range that they show you, which I can't show you anymore on the screen, uh, but that's just the cost of, of shipping it to you. The highest cost on that page is first class postage. And again, I would encourage you to always pay standard postage, which is going to be a little bit slower, but it's going to be a good savings for you that it, it's going to get there and you'll get your, your template too. But those are your options for uh, pinpoint. So the more fun part of it is creating your mailing list and you know figuring all that out. It's a very, very simple postcard template that you can choose from. In fact, they're kind of terrible for the fact that this is such a sophisticated marketing tool that the templates are pretty terrible. That's the way it is, you know, go tell national. Obviously they haven't listened to me all the time I've said that, but uh, point of it is you get that mailing list at the end 
And that's worth something to most of us is that we're able to have that mailing list data. And like you saw on Express Docs, you pay nine cents every, every address, every time you use it. Well, with, with Pinpoint, you paid a little bit more ahead of time, but then you got that mailing list that you can keep and keep updated. So that's the value of using that. Some of you might've have had success uh, with Pinpoint before. Anybody wanna share their story? Well, that'd be a good time to start using it. So you can always give it a try. Uh, go into uh, the greenhouse, go under marketing, print marketing, and get to Pinpoint and Express Docs, and then also try DMS postcards. It wouldn't be a good mail marketing class if I didn't talk to you about sending personalized magazine subscriptions uh, to all of your people through BHG. And I wanna talk to you about that, but first, any questions about anything that we've covered so far? Hey, Patrick. Up. Oh, yeah, this go is, ahead. This is Pam. Pam. I have a question. And the other Pam. Um, the very first uh, one you went through, which was the print time DMS, and, you know, there's the just listed, and then there's the seasonal, or uh, can you incorporate seasonal and you use seasonal to do a just sold or just listed, or were those no. strictly seasonal? Yeah, so okay. the company is only going to pay, good question, so the company is only going to pay for your just listed, just sold, or just pending, you know, one of those options on that page. Uh, but you could send out your own, I mean, you'd pay for them, but yeah. then you can't use your Tell 25 that the company is paying for. And part of that is that it's good marketing for the company too, that's one reason they make that investment, but it's an investment in you, you're able to brand that, make it your own, but it does need to be about a recent sale or recent listing. I was just wondering if we could take that generic just listed and make it look a little seasonal. So, okay. I see. No, you're yeah. stuck with the templates that you have, unless <laughs> okay. you make that eight and a half by five and a half inch uh, design yourself and you can make it whatever you want it to. I, that's what I've done. I've made my own template. And uh, just because I, I feel like I'm handy enough in Canva to do that, I feel like the majority of you listening today would have the capabilities to do that too. And there's also some good templates if you go into bhgeniuskch.com. If you find under uh, some print templates, Christian has uploaded some good, just listed, just sold postcards that are different in there too. Now, if you, if it's just a teaser, you know, pay me what you want. But if you ever come to my bulk mail workshop, which is a four session series, every other week you come to this ses session, we're gonna do it completely remotely this time in the next few weeks. Uh, within the next couple months probably, we'll do this uh, workshop where you can actually design a mail piece from some templates that I've given you, make it your own and send that out with a bulk mail permit. So that'd be one good way to become more familiar and comfortable uh, with uh, marketing and designing your own pieces. So and that's what you were calling the DIY one? Yep, it's called the DIY bulk mail workshop. And uh, if you're ever interested, feel free to send me an email and I'll, I'll get you on the list of whenever we get that scheduled. Thank you. So you bet. Thank you for that question. I'm sure it helps some other people too. Uh, I want to talk to you real quickly before we wrap up and have kind of a Q&A time. Don't leave yet. I already saw one leave. That's not okay. You got to stay the whole time. You signed up for it. So you go down and you, uh, to get to these personalized magazines, what a, uh, hello, what a great way to market to people uh, because they're magazines, they're Better Homes and Gardens magazines, with your face on them. So I think you should send them out. I wish I had one here next to me, but I don't. I, I don't think these things drew very well. I always say, I'm gonna have my example to show you. And then I don't ever do it. So under uh, agent tools is what you'd go to on the greenhouse. We would go down to buy BHG, okay? Once you get to buy BHG, uh, you're gonna click on to go to buy BHG again. It's gonna be slow today, of course, like it always is. And then you're gonna be able to customize these magazine subscriptions that you're gonna buy for people. So you're gonna click go to buy BHG, it's gonna open it up in a new page and ta-da, ta-da, made it. So you, you have a lot of options here. The only ones that I really want you to focus on for the uh, you know, effect of this class is the personalized magazine subscription. $13.25 for a one-year subscription of the Better Homes and Gardens magazine to go out to your contacts with your name and your, you know, your, your design on it. Now I have taken time to design like my own loyalty label is what they call that. And they give you the dimensions on the website. Again, if you're good with Canva, you could very easily come up with one, but there's one that looks like the rest of all of my marketing. And so you can do that too. 
basically, uh, I've made this basically just this year, I've gotten into doing this, but anytime I've closed a sale, I just go in and give these, give the people a, a subscription, you know, 13 bucks, and they'll send them out for a year. It also sends them a welcome postcard that tells them, uh, you know, that they, that we bought it for them. Cause it's kind of a, there's a lag, like several months of a lag before they get their first magazine. This time of year, they send out a holiday theme postcard. So I guess that's an added bonus, but it just lets them know that you bought this gift for them and all of that. So to order it, you just click that. Uh, you basically just put the person's address in. You can place your order. Uh, again, you know, I haven't been great about this until I got to this year. It's just been something that I, I heard at a, at a meeting that I went to or a, a, a conference for BHG and people were having a lot of success with it. And I have found that people are very appreciative of it too. You just put in their address. Now there's some magazines to choose from. You can choose between several magazines that Meredith offers you. I would 100% encourage you to stick with the BHG magazine. Now, let's say you buy a magazine and they already have a subscription. Uh, what it will do is send you a notice. This company will send you an email. It's a third-party company that handles these magazines. And they'll send you an email saying, hey, so-and-so has a subscription that ends such and such date. And you can choose whether to cancel your order at that point or choose a different magazine or you could choose to wait until the end of their current subscription and then yours would pick up. So your loyalty label wouldn't be on that magazine un until their existing subscription ends. So that's something to consider if it's a long, if they just bought a subscription, you'd be better off choosing a different magazine at that point. But I would encourage you to stick with Better Homes and Gardens. Good branding just makes sense that way. I would, I would want you to stick with that if it were me but you own your own business. So you do what you want. Uh, but anyway, that's my encouragement. I think it's great marketing. You know, here's what my loyalty label looks like, for instance, that's literally what it looks like on the magazine. They, they truly just put it on a sticker on front of your magazine. Uh, and so if you saw like the front of this page here, like, you know, they're covering up poor Julianne's legs there. And so uh, anyway, that it, basically that's what they do is they put a, a sticker right over it. Now, what you could also do while we're on this page, just real quickly, is you could buy bulk issues of the magazine. Now, the difference between a bulk issue is that it's $2 an issue, and you're paying for that newsstand quality of the magazine. That means it's got a little bit thicker of a cover, and it's just a, sometimes it's even a larger magazine, just everything's scaled up a little bit, and so it's just a nicer looking magazine. If you're going to put those in folders or, you know, client folders or whatever you want to do, that's one way to do it. But most importantly, I think we should all be using those personalized magazine subscriptions, at least for our past clients. It's a great way, again, to keep in touch with people and give them something that they're actually going to look at. But more than anything, guess what they're going to do with it? They're going to leave it sitting around their house and it's going to have your name sitting on it. I know agents that send these to their chiropractors. They send them to their dentists and they put them in their reception area. Sometimes they'll rip it off is what I found. Uh, you know, the, the receptionist that gets the magazines before she puts them out, she'll rip off the address or something. So it loses the effect, but test it. You're only locked in for a year. You do have to pay it a year in advance. You pay that 1325. It's not like a monthly thing, but you pay for that full year. So go and do that. That's what I would encourage you to do. And now uh, we've gone through a lot today and I just kind of want to recap with you, open up the floor for any, any questions or chat about what you're going to be doing. Um, I want to just recap. So today we covered DMS postcards, tell 25, go use them. That's a great benefit for your business. It's free, free. Hello, go use it. And then also you can log into the greenhouse. You can find Express Docs, also known as the Print Marketing Center. Then you can also log into Pinpoint, a little pricey, but you get that mailing list data at the end. That's the value there. And then of course, those print, uh, the personalized magazines, everybody should be doing those because those are, those are great marketing pieces that go out. So let's talk about questions. And then also I'd love for maybe a few of you to share you know, what you're going to do, what's your game plan for marketing by mail in 2021? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, let's hear what you've got. Talk to me. Any questions? I have kind of an unrelated question. It's um, back on the by BHG, the, the new cookbook. Any reviews? Anybody heard anything about that? I'm very intrigued and I'm wondering if it's a good investment. 
It's not real new. It's just what they call it. That's just the name of the cookbook. Oh. It's just the new BHG. That's it's revised it. with more. It's like the 17th issue of it. It's been around <laughs> for a couple of years, uh, that issue of it. I love those. I love sending, I love giving to those to people for closing gifts. And you can write on the inside cover, you know, a little message oh, and put yeah. the date. Good yeah, idea. Yeah, see, I've got you thinking. Those uh-huh. make great gifts though. And you can buy them in bulk. They have some other good books that hopefully they come back with. They changed their distributor for those books, but they had like a really cool retro coffee table. Uh, it was like a retro home design book that was so cool that I have like five of them in the office. And now I'm like, oh, is this person good enough to give one to? Because they don't <laughs> offer them anymore. But anyway, those are, they had some other good cookbooks too. They had a Martha Stewart cookbook and they had a slow cooker cookbook. But the uh, BHG new cookbook, again, I don't know this is completely off topic, but has some really good stuff, even for people that are not really great cooks. So I've given it even to like some single guy clients that would probably not be the best cooks in the world, but it gives you like a breakdown of, uh, you know, translations, that's not the right word, but you know, how many such and such goes into this or whatever. And it tells you how to cook a hard boiled egg or a lot of the basic stuff in the, in the beginning index. That's pretty cool. They're cheap too, a lot cheaper than you could find on Amazon. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Any questions about what we've covered today? I'd love to hear from some of you, Deborah. I have a question. Yeah. So if I wanted to send out a seasonal postcard, say like a Thanksgiving postcard, what kind of time frame am I wanting to get that set up so it gets there on time? So I'm not sending it, you know, after the weekend after Thanksgiving or something. Good question. Yeah. I would go in here real quickly to do a Thanksgiving one in Express Docs, for instance. You just have to think about who's doing it. And every time you order, you're going to get a better feeling. COVID has, has delayed things. There's no doubt about that. Right. So you have to take that into account too. I think they're pretty well back to normal at Express Docs. They still have you sign that little waiver that says you're not held accountable. They're not holding you, you know, you can't hold them accountable for any late orders. And so that scares me a little bit. So you might get it out sooner than later. It might be early, but at least you've, you know, like I would do it next week around Veterans Day is when I would send out a, a Thanksgiving Okay. Postcard. That's perfect. Thank you. If you order it next week, it's not going to be there by Veterans Day. And in most people's minds, after Veterans Day, it's Thanksgiving, you know, so you can get it out. That's okay. When I'm putting up my Christmas. So hopefully that's how people think. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Glad you joined. Any other questions or comments today? I would love to hear from some of your ideas. Giovanna? Patrick, on the Excel oh. spreadsheet with the mailing yeah. list, does mm-hmm. it need to be in a special um, format? No, it's just going to be whatever you find the best. So in my mailing list, for instance, I like to put last name separate from first name so I can sort them differently. Uh, And then I put the address in a different field than the city and the state and the zip. And then your spreadsheet might have more content to it. It might have phone numbers and email addresses, and that's okay, uh, depending on where you've downloaded it from. And you can choose when, usually when you upload those different sites, you can choose what columns you want, and which ones you don't need, but it doesn't really matter the templates. Okay, thanks. Giovanna? Um, I don't know if this is silly. The, the magazine, it just goes out every month to that same person. Right, yeah, so you buy one subscription, 1325, and the BHG magazine, for instance, is a 12 issue magazine, so they get one every month, yeah. Okay, and the same thing with the bulk, I guess it's just a better quality. You said. When you go in and buy the bulk, you have to do it every month. So if you wanted, and they come to you, they don't come to the person. Oh, uh, okay. So the bulk, that's the point of it being bulk, I guess, is that you get, you could order 10 of them to have on hand for your client folders for the month. And okay. just that you have on hand or that you run into somebody and you've got one in the cars. So I don't know. You don't want to be known as the magazine peddler either. But, <laughs> uh, point of it is the ones that you would mail I would definitely keep doing those for people. They're 1325 for the whole year. Thank you. You bet. Hey Patrick, um, this is Howard. Um, I tried to get into Express Docs and I thought you said you would use your MLS number and probably the password, but, and then if not go to the broker, is that what you said? Are you thinking Express Docs? Is that the system you're trying to get into? Right. Oh, Express, Docs, uh, Express Docs shouldn't have a login. You're going to go to the greenhouse, click on marketing, oh. then print marketing, and then oh. go to the print marketing center and it oh, should gosh. open up for you. If it doesn't, you can talk to your broker or, or and then they might partner you with the help desk for BHG Greenhouse. But 
Um, otherwise, it should just open. There shouldn't be a login. Now, yeah, DMS. I'm sorry, I got it mixed up with print time. Print time, DMS postcards. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. It might be your MLS login. It would be whatever your your broker set you up for whenever they onboarded you. So if that was however many years ago or what, um, you or recently, you'd want to partner with them to help figure out what that login is. Okay. And if not, they might have you do the legwork and reach out to print time to reset that if, if it's not working. But talk to your, your admin or your broker about it. And I didn't check and on a separate subject. I didn't check to see. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't have the auto whatever on the just sold mm -hmm. um, postcards. Did, I'm not sure if you said I could go back and get those, still get the free 25. Is that, can I or? Yeah, if you don't have that on, that means it hasn't sent out a postcard already. That's kind of your qualifier there. As long as a postcard right. hasn't been sent out already, then you can go back and do, you know, there's no time limit on it, but you'd want it to be, in my mind anyway, you'd want it to be pretty timely, you know, within the yeah, last- Yeah, it's been a month. It's been about a month. month. Yeah, within yeah. the last month or two, I think you'd be safe. Anything past that, we're kind of, we've been bad agents and we haven't done a good job of marketing ourselves at that point. And it just wouldn't, <laughs> It wouldn't look right, you know, but yeah, I'm with a you. month or two, I think you're good. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anybody have any other ideas or things that they might be trying out after coming to this class? So glad that you guys took the time to tune in today. Appreciate all of you being here. Listen, you know, tis the season that life gets busy, not just in real estate. Uh, but stick with it. Come to our classes and, you know, do some of the stuff. It's one thing to show up. Now you're going to go have lunch and you're going to forget about what we've talked about, but put it on your calendar to do some of this stuff. It's really going to impact your bottom line. And like I said at the beginning, you come to my class, I want to do and teach you stuff that's going to make a difference in your, in your pocketbook. So I hope that uh, you feel that way. Appreciate all of you. Feel free to email me anytime you have any questions. That's my preferred way of contacting uh, or you know, uh, being in touch with you is email through any of my classes. So feel free to reach out and I'll uh, take good care of you. But come to some of our classes again. You guys have a good rest of your day. Take care. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Thanks, Patrick.